Oh, it's for peace. <laughs> the people of those generations, not knowing personally Imperial Rome, would cry out, What civilization was this? That's been. How mighty a civilization once they saw the edifices. They were in awe, absolute awe. Amazing to their eyes to see these things. Hmm? And they wondered equally after the beast. This beastly system of imperial Rome. So twice over, three times over, the people of this world wondered, were in awe of the magnificence of this empire. And as we say, those that never knew the empire were in awe of what was around them as they grew up from children to see these things. Who's been here? Because of course in those days there was a state of decline. There was a state of no magnificence except that which was left behind. In verse 4, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. They worshipped the dragon, the devil. Do you mean to say that the devil appeared in flesh? Hmm? Was a dragon? Come on, you literalists. Hmm? And the people gathered from around the world and they worshipped a dragon, a physical dragon breathing out fire. Huh? They worshipped the dragon. Well, we have the heavenly metaphor dragon as we said previously and we understand if we know the scriptures and the dragon is one of the many features representations characters of the devil lucifer and as in devil as in devilishness right impishness Darkness of impishness, of devilishness. They worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. They worshipped the dragon through the beast, in acknowledging imperial Rome as being the only true power upon earth and in heaven. The ultimate power. They gave heart worship. Mind worship. Even words. Even words. Great is Rome. Great is the empire of Rome. All hail Rome. And what they were doing. They were worshipping the beast. The beast. And through the beast. They were worshipping the dragon, the devil, Lucifer, Apollyon, the serpent. That's what they were doing. And this is what millennialists do of both kinds when they say that Jesus Christ will one day reign upon earth for a thousand years and then the devil will end that reign because the devil is greater than Jesus Christ. Therefore, again, 
The devil can end the reign of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ cannot sustain his reign upon earth for over a thousand years. It must come to an end after a thousand years because the devil is greater than Jesus Christ. That is giving worship to the devil. When the beggars turn round to us and say, look at the world, the devil's on the throne. That's devil worship. That's devil worship. It's bowing the knee to the devil. Saying the devil has all the power. And so where is Jesus Christ, God and the Holy Spirit? Beneath the power and authority of the seat of the devil. That's how wicked and blasphemous millennialists teaching is. It's utter, utter blasphemy from the pit. Never argue with these buggers. Always point out the fact that they're worshipping the devil, they've crowned the devil, they've seated the devil upon the throne of heaven over all creation. And therefore, the Trinity of God cannot be in that position, but below that position. They're calling the devil almighty, that he has all power and reigns. That's the wickedness of their teaching. <laughs> and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. You see, God didn't give power unto the beast. God did not create the beast. Devilish man created the beast and ultimately was crowned this beast with satanic powers and the darkness of satan, satanic powers of the lower world. Who is like unto the beast and who was able to make war with him. And this is how it was. Who can withstand imperial Rome? Who? The might of its armies, the might of its power, the might of its influence. Who can stand against this? The Jews tried and the Jews failed. And other nations tried and they failed. You know, cut down just like the grass. Cut down. Just like the grass of the field. Hmm? And there was given unto him, the beast, a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. All right, a set time in heaven. A heavenly 42 months. However you work that out in years, a day for a year, it still works out. There is an end to those things upon earth. A set time from heaven, given of heaven. And heaven understands the metaphor. And heaven would inform us that there is a set time to all things. A differing time to all things. That all things have singularly their own time of existence. All right? Because we don't know the precise time. Nobody is exactly sat down. And being able to get the exact time, the exact year that Imperial Rome was created and even ended. Alright, but heaven does. Heaven does. There are many dates fixed. Nobody knows the exact date. In the West it was 410, then it's 500. It's just one of those things. It escapes man, you see. But it doesn't escape heaven. Heaven knows precisely. Precisely. In its time. 
It's like the 12th, okay? the midnight hour on the clock of time. The midnight hour when the virgins should arise. And at midnight there was a cry. All right. And the virgins awoke from their lethargy. And we have it in Matthew 25. Go yet to meet them. Whilst the bridegroom tarried, all slumbered and slept. Sorry, that's verse 5. And verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And the midnight hour, the final hour, the darkest hour. Okay, and he that makes time has plenty of it. All right. Time. Fixed to all things. But he opened his mouth in blasphemies. Well, we all know that Rome, Imperial Rome, opened its mouth and blasphemed God to his face. We don't even have to go into that because we all should know it. Vile, dark, wicked, evil, beyond evil, beyond evil, was this beast. Hmm? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. Oh, I took on the name of God, our rule, we rule, this beast rules, everything is under the authority and the power of this beast, that's blaspheming God for a start, and his, he blasphemed his tabernacle, and them that dwelled in heaven, oh, I'm the ruler, says Imperial Rome, everything is subject to me, and the temple of heaven, of course, is Jesus Christ. And how Pontius Pilate washed his hands of the wickedness that he himself was involved in. And he was as guilty as the ministers who stirred up the people to have Christ crucified. It's always the hierarchy, isn't it? Not the common people. It's the hierarchy stirs up the people. Governments stir up the people to do their wickedness. And that's what Imperial Rome and the Jews did. Well, in fact, the Jews did. Imperial Rome followed. And at that time, there was no enmity between the Jews, Jewish hierarchy, rather, and the hierarchy of Imperial Rome. Both joined hands. Both as wicked as one another. Both found fellowship with one another. A heart twained with one another. And as soon as Jesus Christ, the disturber eh, of the peace, the man who would speak truth and only truth, who was persecuted for speaking the truth, because there was no truth in the people, to receive the truth. The people as a whole. They were individuals. As it is across time. Individuals accept the truth. Because there is light of truth in them. But the vast majority don't want to know. Crucify the truth. Get rid of the truth. Get it out of my eyes. Get it from before me, says the majority of mankind. Don't want to know. They don't want to know. Oh, no, no, no. No. And of course the hierarchy comes along and it says about the truth. Oh, that man there, they don't say he's telling the truth. He's an agitator. He's far right. And so on and so on and so on and so forth. Make him out to look like a devil as they did Jesus Christ who spoke the truth. And if everybody spoke the truth, there'd be no enmity. 
There would be mutual peace, a utopia upon earth, but it is not to be because the fallen nature of man is present, will always be present. And he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The saints, not the Jews, the saints. They didn't go to war with the Jews, did they? But with the saints. Those who were indeed representative of Christianity. There was a mixture of those who professed Christianity that were cast into the amphitheatres. There were Romanists professing to be Christians and there were Christians themselves. Romanism was a thorn in the side as much, well later on, more so, as were the Jews. Well, the Jews never went into the amphitheatres. Only those that represented Christianity. And were, in so many cases, probably Christians. Certainly Christians went there. And probably more nominal Christians. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Aye. It was given to him. Of who? Whom was it given? But of God. But of God Almighty. God Almighty. Even as Job was persecuted. Hmm? And the devil was the instrument to test the character and to show the character of Job. Hmm? How about Bathsheba's husband, a godly man? Put him in the thick of the battle. Hey? God does what he does. His Ways are beyond our ways. And this here, as with the rest of the scriptures, informs us of this. That even for the saints of God, they can be allowed to be persecuted. But all things, remember, work together for good to them that love God. To them that are called according to his purpose. Not man's purpose. To his. According to his purpose. We should never forget that when cross providences, trials and tribulations fall upon us. And as though God has abandoned us. We have to sit there and bear it and go through it just like Job. Have the patience of Job. They come to each and every one of us that belong to the household of faith even as it does to the world. But with us it's for our good. For the world it is not so. They are being condemned. We go through it to make us a better people as in reference to our character. That we may be better outwardly as we are inwardly by justification, by faith, the new man. Now then. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, to overcome them, and power was given unto him to of all kindreds and tongues and nations. That's imperial Rome. Notice tongues. There's a tongues movement here? <laughs> no. Tongues. Languages. Mother languages. The languages that were in, at Babel. 
was one language in Babel that built the temple of worship. We read that. And as they were completing the city, they were cut off by the language. God came and frustrated their language. No more one language, but various languages, various tongues. Okay, and That's why Paul says you need an interpreter in his day for tongues. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written. Verse 8. Mm. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Dwell upon the earth. What's that mean in heavenly metaphor? Dwell upon the earth. It means encamped upon the earth. Interwoven with the earth. To be one with the earth. To be earthy minded. Dwelling upon the things of the earth. Of time and sense. Not upon the things of heaven. We all physically dwell upon the earth. But where is our mindset? Is it consumed with the earth? As these are. Or is it heaven and then earth? As we are, because we are the children of God. The world is knitted, wedded to the world. The world to the world, the people of the world. And we should not, not be conformed to the world, but be transformed in other words.